This is section 2.3, subtracting integers. When we subtract integers, we're going to rewrite the subtraction problem as an addition problem. The way we're going to do this is by using the opposite of a number. So if we have two numbers, a and b, and we're trying to subtract them, then instead of subtracting, we're going to be adding the opposite of the number. So here are some examples. The first step is going to be to rewrite this as an addition problem. So instead of 9 minus 5, we're going to write this as 9 plus, and then we're going to use the opposite of our second number. So the opposite of 5 is negative 5. Now we have an addition problem. In this one, we have numbers with two different signs. So we're looking at their absolute values are 9 and 5. The larger one of those two is 9, so we're subtracting 9 minus 5. That gives us 4, and the number with the larger absolute value was positive, so this is going to be positive 4. So that gives us an answer of 4. Let's do the same thing with this one. If we have 27 minus 15, we can actually write this as 27 plus the opposite of 15. And then we can, we can work this out as a problem with adding integers. So if we work this out, we have our absolute values would be 27 and 15. The larger one is the 27, so we're finding 27 minus 15, which would give us 12, and then we're going to use the sign of the number with the larger absolute value, which was the 27, so we get a positive 12. Now here's another one. In this one, our first number is 2, our second number is 5, so when we rewrite this, we have 2 plus the opposite of 5. Now when we do this as an addition problem, again these two have different signs. We have a plus and a minus. So we're going to find the absolute values are going to be 2 and 5. The one with the larger absolute value is the 5. So we're taking 5 minus 2 which gives us 3 then we're using the sign of the one that had the larger absolute value, which was the minus. So this is going to give us an answer of negative 3. Okay, and one more. Notice that when we're doing this, we don't change anything with the first number. So in this case, if we have negative 2 minus 12, when we rewrite this, we still have negative 2 there. What we're rewriting is the second part of this. So we're changing this minus so that it's plus the opposite of our second number. So when we rewrite this, we end up with negative 2 plus a negative 12. Okay, our absolute values are 2 and 12. Since these have the same sign, we're just going to add those two absolute values, so 2 plus 12 is 14. And then for our final answer, we take the sign that these had in common, which was the negative. So our final answer for this is negative 14. Now if we have a more complicated problem where we're both adding and subtracting integers, we can go through the problem and write all of the subtractions as additions and then we can apply the same things we learned in the last section with adding integers. So here's an example that's written out. In this one we have 9 minus 3, so we're changing that minus so that instead of a minus we have plus the opposite of 3. So that becomes 9 plus negative 3. Then we already had plus a negative 5. And then here again, we're changing this to a plus 
and then we're taking the opposite of negative 7. Well, the opposite of negative 7 is a positive 7. So this one actually becomes just a plus 7. So that's how they got the plus 7 over here. Then we can go through and add these. If we add 9 and negative 3, we end up with a positive 6. Then if we add 6 and negative 5, we end up with a positive 1. And then 1 plus 7 is 8. So our final answer for this would be 8. Let's do some examples. The first thing to do is go through and rewrite any subtractions that are in here. So we want to take this piece and rewrite it. So that gives us 6 plus 20. Notice that those two don't change. Then we're going to take that subtraction and rewrite it as plus the opposite of 15. We can add the 6 and the 20. That gives us 26. So then we have 26 plus a negative 15. Now we're adding a positive integer and a negative integer. So we're going to look at absolute values. are going to be 26 and 15. Since these two have different signs, we want to look at which one of these is larger, which would be the 26. So we're taking 26 minus 15. That gives us 11. And then for the answer, we take the sign that went with the larger of these two. So that's going to end up being a plus. So we end up with an answer of 11. Okay, in this one we have two different subtractions, so we have to rewrite a little bit more. So we're starting out with our negative 1. That doesn't change at all. Then for this subtraction, we're rewriting this as an addition. So we're going to add the opposite of negative 11. And the opposite of this, of negative 11, is positive 11. So that's going to give us negative 1 plus 11. And then we have the same thing here. We have a negative, so we're going to rewrite that as plus the opposite of 12. So we end up, when we've rewritten this, we have negative 1 plus 11 plus negative 12. So let's do this part first. A negative 1 plus 11 would give us a positive 10. And then if we add 10 and negative 12, we're going to end up with a negative 2. So our final answer for this is negative 2. Okay, for this one, we have one subtraction that we need to rewrite. Everything else is going to stay the same. So we have negative 16 plus 11. Then we're changing that subtraction to plus the opposite of 18. And then we have plus a negative 4. So if we start out with these two, if we add negative 16 and positive 11, we get negative 5. Then if we add negative 5 and negative 18, again, these two have the same sign. They're both negative. So we can just think about what their absolute values are and add those two together. So we'd have 5 plus 18 is 23. And we take the sign that they had in common, which was negative. So that gives us a negative 23 plus a negative 4. And again, here we have two numbers with the same sign. So we're just thinking about adding their absolute values. So if we add 23 and 4, we get 27. And then since these were both negative, that becomes a negative 27. So our final answer here ends up being negative 27. We also need to think about evaluating algebraic expressions for example, if we want to evaluate x minus y, 
when x is equal to negative 6 and y is equal to 8. What that means, remember, is that we're replacing the x with negative 6 and we're replacing y with an 8 in our expression. So we have our x minus y, we write our parentheses, and then replace the x and the y with our values. So that gives us negative 6 plus negative 8. And the final answer for that would be negative 14. So let's do the same thing. Let's evaluate x minus y with some different replacement values. So for this one, if we start out with x minus y, here's where we're going to put in our parentheses to represent our x and our y. So we're going to replace the x with a negative 2. So we have a negative 2 in that first set of parentheses, and we're replacing the y with a negative 8. So now we have negative 2 minus a negative 8. Now since this is a subtraction, we want to rewrite that. So we're going to change that to an addition, and the opposite of negative 8 is positive 8. So that means we end up with negative 2 plus positive 8. Then if we add these together, remember since these have different signs, we're actually subtracting their absolute values. 8 is the larger of the two, so we're taking 8 minus 2. That gives us 6. And then we take the sign of the larger of those two, which was a plus. So this ends up being a positive 6. Okay, for this one, we have 8 for x, so in this first parentheses we're putting our 8, and our y was negative 32. Our next step is to rewrite this, and notice here we can go ahead and take off the parentheses because there's nothing else that we need to do inside of there. So we can just write that as 8. We're going to rewrite this subtraction as an addition. So we have a plus there. And then again here, the opposite of this is going to be positive 32. So we have 8 plus 32. And we can just add those together and get 40. Okay, and finally, We're going to replace our x with a negative 9, and then we're also replacing the y with a negative 9. Then if we rewrite our subtraction, we have a plus. The opposite of negative 9 is positive 9, so we have negative 9 here plus 9. Here's another place to notice that since these two are opposites, then we know if we add the two together, we get zero. So that's our final answer. We can also solve problems by subtracting integers. So let's start out with Amy and her checking account. Amy has $545 in her checking account. She writes a check for $257 and then makes a deposit of $75. And we want to find the balance in her account. We're going to write that amount as an integer. So if she has a positive balance, we'll write it as a positive number. If she has a negative balance, we'll write it as a negative number. So we're starting out with $545. If she writes a check for $257, that means that we're going to be subtracting $257 from her balance. So that's going to give us a minus $257, and then making a deposit means that she's adding $75 to her account. 
So if we're talking about accounts like this, if we're making a deposit or if we're starting out with a balance, then that's going to be an addition. If we're writing a check or withdrawing money, that's going to be a subtraction. Okay, so let's rewrite our subtraction as adding the opposite of the number. So that gives us 545 plus a negative 257 plus 75. For these two, since they have different signs, we're looking at the absolute values of each one. The 545 is going to have the bigger absolute value. So in this case, this actually gets us right back to where we started over here because we're going to be taking 545 minus 257. At any rate, this is going to give us an answer of 288. So if we take 288 plus 75, that gives us 363. So her balance is going to be a positive $363. Okay, now we have an airplane that's flying at an altitude of 24,000 feet above sea level and they're sending messages to a submarine that is at a depth of 1,500 feet below sea level and we want to find the difference in the elevations between the airplane and the submarine. So first let's write each of these as an integer. If we're 24,000 feet above sea level, so for our airplane, then its elevation is a positive 24,000 feet. For our submarine, since it's below sea, sea level, we would represent this by a negative number. So that's going to be represented by a negative 1500. Now we want to find the difference in the elevations. Since we're doing a word problem, we're looking for keywords here. And remember, difference signals subtraction. That was one of our keywords for subtraction when we were translating. So what that means is that we need to subtract these two integers. So we're going to take 24,000 and subtract our negative 1,500. Okay, now we can rewrite this subtraction as an addition. So we're going to rewrite that as plus the opposite of negative 1500, which is just positive 1500. So now all we're doing is adding the 24,000 and the 1500, and that's going to give us 25,500. So that means the difference in the elevations is 25,500 feet.